if you use NVIDIA for local AI or do anything with NVIDIA GPUs on a daily basis like I do, you'll know that installing drivers just generally sucks. It's the one thing you know that when you do it, you might just break your entire config. What's funny is I know multiple software engineers who have spent, uh, not like weeks, but days putting together scripts that will perfectly and cleanly uninstall and reinstall. Lambda created Lambda stack to solve this exact problem. And what's cool is sometimes you get cool new features, you get optimizations, and other times it'll just, as I said, entirely brick your system. But what's cool is in theory, Nvidia just dropped something very interesting. So aside from having one of the best quarters in the entire history of the company financially, they're also doing pretty good with drivers. Supposedly they're working on a much better supported open source driver for Linux. And today they gave us maybe a hint of where that's going. So earlier this week, Nvidia released their version 555 driver. And this is upgrading from 550. So if your setup works great right now and you're using really expensive GPUs like A100s or H100s or on the very high end of in NVIDIA consumer GPUs like 4090s, you're probably not gonna see a massive performance jump. But in a little bit, I wanna get into exactly the group that will see a boost. And firstly, the biggest part of that group are people who use Windows. So rightly so, most people who do stuff with NVIDIA GPUs for AI, local AI, whatever, they're using it on Linux, or they're using it on a VPS, and they're just SSHing into that machine to do what they need. And that's because, generally speaking, the support is just better on these machines. I'm just gonna say it. Uh, I don't use Windows, but I know a lot of people who want to get into local AI do, and they still deserve support. So Microsoft and NVIDIA got together and thought about some ways they could make this better. And the result was this NVIDIA 555 series driver. And it turns out that it also helped a few other areas of performance, specifically for, again, RTX GPUs. So welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. So the group of people this is going to affect most positively are people who use lower end GPUs, particularly NVIDIA GeForce or RTX GPUs, and want to do local AI things. Obviously, this has been kind of a missing part of Windows for some time, and even though this week they announced that they're going to have certain AI features built into Windows, some that are kind of spyware in a way, there's been a lot to be desired for Windows users, even outside of kind of the like Linux subshell system that in theory you can use to run some local llama and local AI stuff on your system. This driver is pretty interesting, and it's, again, just a way you update your driver, and uh, as always, the <laughs> disclaimer that if you are updating a driver always be able to roll back and understand that this might break some things depending on your config so with that disclaimer out of the way i want to get into why this driver matters so the nvidia blog post on this is pretty illuminating and it pretty much says that this was launched kind of right around the time that microsoft announced their new 5.3 model updates and it's pretty cool so they pretty much say we have worked with microsoft to build a new driver with ai performance optimizations and integrations for windows that help deliver maximum performance on nvidia geforce rtx ai pcs and NVIDIA RTX workstations, specifically for large language models and for use cases with generative AI. And in theory, those can now run up to three times faster. Now, 3x is a big number, and we'll see in just a bit kind of where that plays out. This also affects the uh, ONX runtime and direct ML, which is pretty cool. And what's pretty cool is it says here that the core focus was for ORT, or ONX, and DirectML, which are high-performance tools that run AI models locally on Windows PCs, keyword being uh, Windows. WebNN is also a big factor of this. WebGPU, to me, is probably one of the most underrated technologies in AI and has been for the last few months. And basically, this just means that uh, it's a way you can run LLMs in your browser and have direct connections between your browser and your GPU, and this driver also improves some of that tooling. So in theory, there is AI in video games now to an extent. Microsoft showcased that this week as well. And, you know, in theory for Copilot Plus PCs, this is also why they want this to be used. You know, in theory, NVIDIA still wants to make a big case for using NVIDIA GPUs on the desktop and in laptops for things that, uh, in theory, would be more powerful than using uh, the, the new Qualcomm Snapdragon chip that, again, Microsoft released earlier this week for their new surface. They also mention uh, NVIDIA RTX Remix, NVIDIA Omniverse, and a bunch of kind of gaming specific things, and some things like upscaling and doing audio tuning and audio cleanup for streamers. What's pretty cool with this is more so the performance you get for certain kinds of models. So what I want to say is, again, if you're using hyper kind of high-end GPUs or workstation GPUs, you might get some benefits that just make your system more stable. I always make fun of Windows because it seems like every time I use Windows, it breaks and I use Windows probably, I don't know, 12 times a year, so it's funny that when I do use it, it breaks. But what's interesting here is where it delivers better performance. So we can see here, they're comparing 
the previous 550 version driver and the new 555 version driver, which is the one that's promising this 3x performance boost. Now, what's interesting is they're comparing FP16, so full precision and 4-bit precision. And these are wildly different. So it, it's this graph is clearly cherry-picked because you know full precision, you're generally only running on massive GPUs with tons of memory. And the thing is, most of the huge performance gain you're going to get for small GPUs that have less memory really just has to do with how the GPU can actually interact with the weights that it's been given. And if it's an older GPU, it's just going to be slower. So for reference, this graph was done with a RTX 4090 GPU. So the improvement is going to be kind of largest here. And, you know, one thing we generally see in terms of capability and speed is that obviously with smaller quantizations, you get more tokens per second. So they're really just looking at speed here. They're not really looking at accuracy or overall performance. This is a very small sliver of what GPUs can do locally when you run LLMs. And they're comparing kind of an interesting set here. So Mistral 7B, Llama 2 7B, which are both pretty small models, and 5.3 Mini 4K. And obviously 5.3 Mini 4K is one of the latest models from Microsoft and it's meant to be really small. I think Mistral is likely kind of the, the most realistic uh, indication of the performance here. So you can see here that between FP16, between these two drivers, the improvement really isn't that much. It's maybe 10%. And then when we look at the 4-bit quants, I wouldn't call it a, a 3x improvement, but I, I would call it roughly a 10 to 15% improvement. And what's interesting with this is unless you're using a really dated GPU, so something like a 3060 Ti, which is still, don't get me wrong, a great choice for local AI, you're not gonna see a massive boost here. And of course, you're seeing in theory a boost here on a 4090, but the real speed of like you interacting with it will be much bigger, again, if you're using one of these older GPUs. And frankly, uh, I'm about to make a video about a very interesting version of the 2080 Ti. So if you have one of those and you know what I'm talking about, this driver is going to be a game changer for you. And you can see here that clearly with 4-bit quants, you get solid boost in performance. And the, the real advancement here, and, I, and I've talked about this before, is more so that they want to improve the experience of using local LLMs on Windows. And generally that experience is tied to how quickly you can interact or go back and forth with these uh, LLMs. It's why OpenAI really prioritized this in GPT-4.0 which really makes it now one of the easiest LLMs to interact with, even if, even if it's maybe not the most capable or the most intelligent or um, the most accurate. And by doing this, this means that people who are now playing video games that have LLMs built in to do character dialogue or to do things that in kind of a generative fashion for skyboxes or people who just want to do kind of edge inference and mess around with these things now have uh, a lot more performance to play around with and it opens the bounds for kind of edge systems and smaller GPUs to have a better shot as well. So again, if you're really into using sort of these new edge accelerators, some of which aren't actually even directly plugged into your system, the idea of moving to a, a point where we optimize tokens per second over accuracy or adaptability, I think is pretty cool. So I'm gonna try this on my machine. I don't think I'm gonna see that much of a difference. I have one machine I use for editing that has a 4090 and I'm going to carefully take out all of the SSDs I have Linux on uh, and then install Windows on like a sacrificial SSD and we'll see how it goes. Uh, I do wanna talk about this, you know, Nvidia is absolutely killing it when it comes to AI and when it comes to the world of GPUs. And it is cool to start seeing this. I will say in the world of drivers, I am much, much more excited to see the official Linux driver release. This has been, uh, for those of you who don't know, a really spicy topic within the Linux community, specifically Linux Torvalds. If you really want um, to spruce up your day and see something funny, just go to Google and search Linus Torvalds uh, NVIDIA. You'll see there's a very funny video of, of him getting mad with what NVIDIA does. And I think if NVIDIA can, you know, do very good things since basically the crux of this is they, they hired the one guy who was an open source contributor for the NVIDIA driver on Linux and they just pirated him. They said, cool, we'll just pay you a real salary and you can help us out. Drivers getting better is cool. Drivers are what make GPUs work for all of us. And hopefully the Windows bros have a better experience for local AI going forward. But for everyone here, it's a step forward for local AI and how many people can do it and how many people can do it with um, a pretty decent experience. So keep an eye out for our upcoming video on that uh, special older GPU that's now really popular for some reason. 
As always, we hope you learned something and we'll see you in the next one.